This week's royal related moments were about the military, the media, and for the most part, the men of the British royal family. Let's take a look at all things royal related from the week. The week began with yet another member of the royal family suffering an injury or illness with the announcement that Princess Anne had been hospitalized from a head injury. The exact details of her injury are unknown, and Anne says she's unable to remember what happened, but her medical team have said that her injuries are consistent with a potential impact from a horse's head or leg. A head injury combined with memory loss for someone of her age is never a good thing. She was released from the hospital on Friday and will continue to recover at home, and the official statement has been that she will return to public duty once her medical team clears her to do so. The news of Anne's injury itself is a big deal, but I also found it interesting how transparent her team was with the information they gave regarding her status. The handling of Anne's injury was more similar to Charles's than Kate's with the amount of details that they released. Also, like with Charles, we saw Anne receiving visitors with her husband, Tim Lawrence, and her daughter, Zara, visiting her multiple times. It seems that in an effort to explain away why William was not seen visiting Kate more than one time for only a few moments, Rebecca English's insistence from earlier this year that members of the royal family do not visit each other in the hospital has once again been proven false. Despite Anne often being called the workhorse of the family, no pun intended, as far as we know, Charles and William did not stop by to visit her but perhaps they were busy with other things, as this week the Emperor and Empress of Japan made a state visit to Buckingham Palace. The visit, which is said to have been scaled down due to the upcoming election, was scheduled to help the UK bolster its role as the most influential European nation in the Indo-Pacific region. During their time in the UK, the Emperor and Empress attended a banquet hosted by Charles, laid a wreath at Westminster Abbey, and toured one of Britain's biomedical research institutes. William was somewhat involved in the visit, but Kate was not, and I couldn't help but think of the last time we saw her in a state visit with this memorable red outfit, and how Camilla and Charles probably appreciated that she wasn't around to steal the headlines again. This week, William sat on a panel for the Earthshot Prize called Stories of Impact, and the panel was said to showcase some of the winner's projects, but had a difficult time finding any of those projects to share. I genuinely would if I could find them, but the articles and social media posts I saw mainly focused on either William or the celebrities that attended, such as Hannah Waddingham or Bill Gates. And I find this often with Earthshot events. I have to dig for information about the winners and the participants and the organizations that they've created. Improving the environment is a great cause, but I want to know exactly what the winners are doing. What are their names? What companies do they own or work for? And what are their plans? The focus so rarely seems to be on them, making this a hard initiative to support. But perhaps William keeping the focus on himself is a learned behavior, as Saturday marked Armed Forces Day in the UK. And for some reason, Charles thought the best way to honor the UK's armed forces would be with a new portrait of himself. So many medals for someone who shows so little bravery. Prince Harry also marked Armed Forces Day with the help of the charity Scotty's Little Soldiers, of which he is the global ambassador. The charity released a conversation between Harry and the founder of Scotty's, Nikki Scott, and in the video, Nikki describes her experience of losing her husband in Afghanistan and having to tell her children and help them deal with the loss of their father. This eventually led to her creating the charity, which supports children in Britain who have lost a parent in the military. The organization currently supports over 600 children a year, with the goal of reaching 1,000 children by 2030. Was it, was it created out of grief or out of hope? Mm, I don't know. I was definitely still grieving mm. when all that was going on. So when you started it, it was probably a convenient distraction. Yeah, but 100%. Now... And oh, now it's my life. Like, it literally is my life seeing the young people that is the best like and hearing the stories from the team when they've worked with a child or a family that are just at the beginning of the journey or have hit a moment when they've just in absolute darkness and then hearing how they can turn their lives around because Scott is has supported them it's just phenomenal like credit to the team because it is just so you're hoping Scott is helping, what, 657? It's over 650, yeah. We've set this goal of, you know, by 2030, we want to be supporting um, at least 1,000 children annually. And so that's what we're reaching for. But to, to drive, you know, to find those children, young people, you've got to have the funds to do it mm -hmm. at the same time. So actually, 
I feel like we've had a steady growth and because of that steady growth, it's meant that we can put the foundations in place to make sure this charity continues for years. And Scotty's is not the only UK organization that the Sussexes have partnered with recently. Through Archwell.com, they shared the Archwell Foundation's support of Global Girl Media UK. Global Girl Media UK's mission statement says that they help to empower girls and young women, especially those from underrepresented communities, through digital media training to bring their voices to global platforms. Recently, Archwell facilitated an insight session with members of this group, and the session focused on the benefits of widespread access to communication, innovative solutions to combat misinformation, and the dual nature of social media. And it is not a surprise that the support of a more fair and honest media is important to the Sussexes as Harry's court cases against the UK tabloids continue. In a hearing this week for Harry's case against NGN, lawyers for NGN argue that despite Harry already providing 11,000 documents for disclosure, they wanted more information, including previous drafts of spare and electronic messages between Harry and his ghostwriter. Harry's team said that those items no longer exist, and the judge has ruled that Harry must attempt to recover the documents and write a witness statement as to why they were destroyed after the court proceedings began. He also must write to Charles's secretary, Clive Anderson, and the royal treasurer, Michael Stevens, to request any relevant documents they may have. Harry's legal team argued that this is a phishing expedition, meaning that NGN's team don't know of any specific documents that could help their case, but they're hoping they find something. And what they're looking for is proof that Harry knew about the phone hacking years ago so that they can say he brought the case too late. Which is essentially them saying, you knew we were criminals who hacked your phone a long time ago, while still maintaining the defense that they've never hacked any phones. It would be funny if it weren't so corrupt. And it certainly cannot be a coincidence that just as stories of Will Lewis being accused of destroying 30,000 emails and multiple file cabinets worth of documents proving phone hacking go viral in the U.S., the NGN decides to accuse Harry of doing the same. In more positive news, BetterUp, where Harry works as Chief Impact Officer, announced a partnership this week with Brene Brown. Brene is a research professor at the University of Houston, but she's better known for her decades of study on courage, vulnerability, shame, and empathy. She has six New York Times bestsellers and hosts two podcasts. This new partnership will bring her expertise and research to BetterUp's customers, and I can't help but think that maybe Harry had something to do with this partnership, as he and Megan have been friends and supporters of Brene for years. In 2019, Brene was featured in the September issue of British Vogue, edited by Megan. In 2020, they featured her on their podcast, with Harry giving her this introduction. Someone who's helped a lot of people see things more clearly this year is Brené Brown, who we think is awesome. <laughs> She's a researcher, writer, and podcaster. Her work is rooted in the study of vulnerability, shame, and courage. And on International Women's Day in 2021, Brené praised them for their bravery. Bravery, courage, vulnerability, empathy. I can certainly see why they are friends. Speaking of courage and bravery, it was also announced this week that Harry will receive the Pat Tillman Award for Service at this year's ESPY Awards. The award celebrates individuals who have made significant contributions to others in the world of sports and celebrates the legacy of Pat Tillman, who was an NFL player and U.S. Army Ranger. This will highlight Prince Harry's Invictus Games, which provides an international platform to support wounded, injured, and sick service members. Since 2014, the Games have changed lives and saved lives for military men and women in 23 nations, with not only the Games themselves, but a year-round platform of support and events that the members can participate in. To quote Kate Jackson, Vice President of Production for ESPN, on why Harry and others were selected, these honorees have used their platforms to change the world and make it more inclusive for marginalized and suffering communities, demonstrating incredible resilience, positivity, and perseverance. And while most of the Sussex news this week was focused on Harry, we did get a brief glimpse of Meghan. She was spotted on a Beverly Hills walking trail, and even though the video is short, it looks like she's either filming something or doing some type of photo shoot. And many people took note of Meghan's clothing, which looks to be sportwear that we don't usually see her in. Whatever she's doing, it's nice to see her happy and unbothered and doing what she loves. Speaking of love, as always, with everything having to do with the Sussexes, there is a lot of noise to ignore, particularly with Harry's court case and the SB award. So I thought I would end with this reminder from Harry and Meghan on what really matters. And from us, I will say, 
no matter what life throws at you guys, trust us when we say love wins. Love always wins. So true.